are doing good and keeping safe. And as you all know, today Lakshmi meets young, lovely millennial Rajasri, who's a photographer and an entrepreneur. So let's all welcome Rajasri Zaveri on Mathri's Luxury dot co. Hi, Madhvi. Hi, Rajasvi. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm welcome on Madhvi's Luxury dot co. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Looking forward for a wonderful conversation with you because it's very interesting topics that we have taken for today. And uh, to begin with, uh, Rajeshwari, I would love to know your journey and your story. You're too young still, though. There's a lot to go, but still, whatever you know, it would be really interesting to know about your story and your journey. Sure. Uh, so I recently graduated about two and a half, three years ago. Um, I studied at Middlesex University and I did my undergraduation in photography and specializing in portrait photography. And since I've been back, I have tried to find different ways to express my creativity. I started a photography company with one of my friends and we do uh, different shoots, commercial shoots, and we do um, wedding, pre-wedding shoots, and we do... um videos and things like that um but apart from that i also uh divulged into jewelry designing for a bit and i have my own line of jewelry also and just since then i've been trying to find different ways of uh, form of expression and i think photography is that one for me and uh I have many ongoing projects going on for photography but uh, right now because of the pandemic there's nothing commercial going on uh, but yeah personal projects and independent projects that I keep doing are still there okay. and i think you're more of a creative uh, you're more of a creative person no? when it comes to either jewelry designing or photography and the topic that we are going to come up with which is a, a really whole topic for today and the topic is going to be indian debate skin uh, by as beauty company alter advertisements so that's going to be the main topic for today but then before that uh, rajeshwari i would like to know you as a photographer so uh, you know how did that come to you and uh, what all uh, shoots if you can mention some of your clients uh, if possible and uh, you know how did you get into photography So I do portraits I believe. Yes, I want to specially portrait photography because I think uh I like to shoot people rather than things or you know inanimate objects and I feel like everyone has their own story to portray when it comes to uh you know how they are where they come to be. And uh, that's why I'm interested in uh, portrait photography. I like to talk to people, I like to know about them, their stories. and it, and it's very naturally that comes to me uh, uh talking to people in about their stories is uh, also because of my mother and she is also an artist and she also started with portrait uh, um painting and i think that's how my uh, interest rose in uh, photography especially portrait photography and uh, most of the topics that i um think about or that i relate to in my photography is topics surrounding the um, concept of identity so self identity and how do you see yourself and how do you show yourself so that's two things that i you think about when i take picture has gone yeah i just it's getting on yeah i can see you can you hear yeah i i think just gone for a minute then i think problem no worries so you can carry on uh, so you're saying that that's uh, the topic that interests you in photography is basically identity 
Yeah. Like to. And uh, okay. some of the shoots that I've done, I've done a lot of pre-wedding shoots for people. Um, I've done um, commercial shoots, even for uh, TBZ the brand, and I've done for a couple of designers. Um, you know, high fashion labels and things like that. So it's going well that way. But uh, still, as a creative person, as a curious thinker, I always want to know more about our, the life, the world that we live in, our society, and how it plays a role. Yeah, I know the family closely, and I know your mom is a good artist. She's a renowned artist. Your brother is a musician, and you're into photography. And I think it's created a bunch of people at home. So it's really uh, nice to know that. And if you can tell me something a bit about uh, you as a jewelry designer. So I launched a line, um, which was uh, basically it was very very millennial. It was for. Uh, girls my age or maybe slightly older who want to buy something on their own, something meaningful but within their budget, something trendy also. So my jewelry line was uh, basically uncut diamonds, run around the edges, small, modern, contemporary work. Um, that was basically the jewelry that was about. That's right. And I'm honored to say that I happen to be a part of your first jewelry uh, launch, you know, that you had done at the Lila Chanakapuri. And you are the presentation of the Chibumatachi, which is a very family, I believe. And uh, so it comes naturally to, I believe, being in the atmosphere and family, things come very naturally to you. And your creativity is amazing. You can see it in your photography. You can see it in your new project that you're doing. So I would like to come on the new, uh, new project that you're doing. So if you can tell something about Poems of My Body, the project that you are recently uh, doing, I would like to know what exactly is that. Uh, sure. So basically, I started this project in my last year of college. It was uh, my final project. And it's called Folds of My Body. It's uh, basically it deals with body insecurities that most women or even men for that matter have. And as, as an Indian, you know, um, we have our own insecurities. People have problems with, you know, oh, I'm pear shaped or I am apple shaped or I don't know all the different kinds of fruits people use to describe themselves. Uh, this project, project was just a way of looking at every uh, individual person as everything that they are flaws and quirks and everything included and this project um, it came up to be when i was in london there's always uh, so many different kinds of people people from all cultures people from all countries who were there so it was a good opportunity for me to get in touch with all these different people and uh, find somewhat similarities amongst all the differences that we have and uh, that's how the project came up to be and I'm still continuing it although in India people are still more conscious about uh, nahi, you know we can't uh, uh, I don't know how this photo shoot would be I'm not okay with uh, uh, you know sharing so much about myself and people think more more about society and uh, things like that but uh, I think it's catching up now. People are more accepting of, you know, different skin tones as is the topic that we're going to talk about, even different sizes and all of that. So that's what my project is about, that every part of you is beautiful and every shape is beautiful. Lovely, wonderful. And I'm glad you have uh, come up with this speech because not very many people will have the courage to speak about it and talk about it. And uh, you very correctly said that internationally, you know, people are more open about uh, discussing their issues and everything compared to India. And I think global exposure really helps a person. And being in a, in a you know, a city like London, when you're meeting so many other people from different uh, communities, and I believe that the color of the blood is same, but yes, it could be different, uh, you know, uh, skin and sizes, people could be of different shapes and sizes. And we'll also be working on identity, gender, social status, appearances, and uh, uh, all these issues. So I would like to know your views on the recent hot topic of skin tone, uh, you know, identity companies like Unilever. If you can tell something about that. So I've been seeing, I've been reading about uh, the fact, I think all of this 
mostly started because of the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, it started in the US and it somehow in a good way affected how we think in India or it's coming to India. I won't say that, you know, it's changing people's mind yet. But it's a good approach uh, because I think perception is built on how you see things, what is shown to you. And companies who sell fairness cream products or, you know, their tagline is fair and lovely. Uh, which it puts in your head that, you know, if I'm not fair, I'm not worth it or I'm uh, not good enough. But the, the idea of changing their uh, product name uh, might not affect as much as, you know, the product itself because it is still going to be a fairness cream. Um, so I think it's a good move towards it, but people are definitely still going to have uh, their set mindset, which has been happening for, I don't know, for the longest time in Indian society. Uh, that you know that this discrepancy based on skin color. Uh, but I think it's a good uh, move that they've made of at least making it less visible, if not completely gone. the demise of uh, George Floyd, the debate uh, got sparked, you know, about uh, racism and discrimination even more. So, other thing, you know, how do you think that the companies uh, play on the insecurities on people to make uh, millions? What do you have to say about that? Like how, how do these companies play, you know? I think uh, a lot of companies uh, target insecurities to sell their products. Um, because uh, obviously every, if anyone looks at themselves in the mirror, they're going to find 10 things they don't like about themselves. Like, you know, I wish this was different, I wish that was different. And these, it means that there is that space where they think that they can uh, better themselves or they can change about themselves. And I think big companies like this, they use these to provide a product which will make them feel like, you know, yeah, okay, this is wrong with me and using this product, I will be able to change it. It's not the best feeling if, you know, you look at yourself in the mirror and you feel like, oh, I wish I was lighter or, oh, I wish, you know, uh, I look like one of the Bollywood actresses with the fair and glowy skin. And then you go and you buy these products, even if it's not just cream, or even bleaching or, you know, all the different kinds of treatment that people are doing for skin whitening. It, inherently is not good for their body, it's not good for their skin, but uh, people use it against them and it's a billion dollar market out there for all these kinds of hair straightening, uh, skin lightening, all these products. Right, well said. And I think it's about being body positive than anything else. I think you should be uh, really feeling good about yourself, the way God has created you, then having all these complexes and anxieties. So, uh, also I would like to know what you have to say about uh, the size zero thing and anorexic, you know, you get, you become so this thing about size zero. So, what do you have to say about that? Because having that model like figure and all that. I think it's uh, changing. I recently saw this uh, post of uh, Calvin Klein ad. From 2009, they had used a model who was completely size zero, like, you know, the fittest of the fittest. But now even big brands are coming up with plus size models, more uh, inclusive, body inclusive models, where you know you see someone on the news uh, in the newspaper or in the magazine, you relate to that person. I think it's very important that you know a person is healthy. You're uh, you know not unfit, um, like for according to your body. Uh, but I think uh, trying to achieve these expectations that you know uh, you have to be within a certain inch range uh, I think it's a little uh, unrealistic to be honest real and to like to look at this everywhere uh, there are ads because you can relate to them and it's about uh, being uh, you know normal than being uh, weak and unhealthy I think that's so important. And how about, uh, so like, what do you have to say about the inclusivity in media and magazines for all kind of bodies and skin tones? 
Yeah, so just like I was just mentioning about uh, Calvin Klein, uh, even if you see these days, um, a big brand like Sabya Sachi, they've also used models who are, you know, uh, more natural looking, less made up and, you know, less photoshopped. I think even Photoshop was like a big deal very recently. Even if I would take a picture of a friend, she, because she knows I've studied photography and Photoshop is a part of the skill that I have to learn. And lots of people used to tell me, oh, can you make this thinner? Can you make this lighter? Make slight changes. But I think it's very important for people uh, to not do that. It's uh, not, uh, you know, real for uh, uh, making those changes and just to show it. Society's acceptance. Yeah, I think it's more important to accept yourself the way you are and just be confident because I think confidence is, uh, confidence is more important than anything else. The rest just follows. Yeah, so yeah, I think high time for sure. Thanks. And uh, if I may ask you, what is life to a young woman in India right now? Uh, for me, um, I think there are obviously societal norms that you have to adhere to. Uh, you have to be a certain way, present yourself a certain way. And, uh, but I think things are changing for the better. People are getting more aware. Now you cannot change your mindset of people that have been there since the colonial times when the Britishers used to, you know, rule over us. And where, at, even at that time, they used to um, give the lighter skinned Indians more government positions and things like that. So it's been in us in the long for a millennium now. It's been there for hundreds of years. And it will take time to change, but I think things are changing. People are talking about such issues, and it's a good thing. And even uh, if you heard about the Shadi.com news that came out, where they finally removed a filter which talks about the complexion of the partner that you're looking in. I think that's also a good move because even if, like, you know, at an age when you're looking to get married or something, you have to make a list of all your policies. And I think skin tone should not be a quality that, you know, that should uh, define anything. Thank you. And uh, I believe you're also working on identity, gender, and social status. Uh, also, these topics. So, what do you have to say about uh, the gender discrimination? I think uh, gender discrimination, like any other, is, you know, it's, it's there and, you know, like people have, you know, they've shown studies that um, a woman is paid 80% or, you know, like 20% less than a man is paid. Uh, it, it's good to talk about such things so that, uh, you know, people are aware and they should ask questions and they should ask, why am I not getting the equal pay for the job that I'm doing? Uh, but like any other problems, you know, in our society, we have to tackle all of them one by one. And it's not going to change overnight, but people need to change the way they think and, you know, the way they, they look at uh, the situations around us. And I think slowly but steadily, it should work out for the better. Right, absolutely. And I think uh, it should not be about a man or a woman, it's about equals and it's about, uh, you know, uh, equality. There should be no discrimination anywhere in any profession because they are no less than the men, I personally believe. And uh, we've also taken up a topic of social status. And, uh, you know, I know uh, you belong to such an affluent family of the Tibuban Dajji Pinti is a very family, but then I must say the way you've been brought up is amazing. You're so grounded, so down to earth, and uh, such a creative person. And, uh, you know, as of now, it's, don't you think uh, because of COVID, uh, COVID-19, the social status has become like an equalizer for everywhere, everybody all over the world, actually. So what do you have to say about the social status? I think uh, the differences that have been there, uh, you know, uh, based on social status, I think it's still there. Even due to COVID, there's still the rich of the rich who are living life like it's a holiday. And there are still people who are struggling to, you know, get food on a monthly basis. So, uh, it, it sure has affected everyone, but not affected everyone in the same way. Like when you see the news of people walking back to their villages on, and, you know, taking, going on cycles and things like that. 
while you are sitting in your living room watching it on a flat screen TV, so you can't really see that you feel, uh, you know, that you are, uh, you know, that you feel their pain. Uh, but I think everyone in their own uh, little form should contribute and, you know, uh, try to help the people who are not as, um, uh, I won't say gifted, but who are not as affluent as you are. And uh, I think it's also about being thankful for what you have uh, and to share it with people, uh, you know, uh, show some, be a little empathetic, just don't be sympathetic, you, you know, oh, poor soul, but be empathetic that, you know, I feel, I feel you. Awesome. And uh, so, uh, you've been working on the appearance, background and real life experiences through your lens of the camera. So that's really interesting. What is a message you would like to give to the young girls, you know, who are so conscious and they want to be like size zero, they want to look like models and uh, how, how, you know, what would you like to tell them about their insecurities, anxieties and fears of not being matching up to the models and, you know, the film stars? I think for girls my age, younger or older for that matter, uh, it's it's important to, uh, you know, accept uh, why, why you are unique. It's okay to want to look like someone, but not at the risk of, you know, uh, giving up your uniqueness in that matter. Um, for people who want to be like, uh, say someone like, uh, Kylie Jenner, like, you know, has a perfect body, perfect life, like Kylie Jenner. Uh, but Kylie Jenner is already there. So be something that's originally you. Make Be be someone who you're comfortable with. And, you know, sure, there's always room for improvement. There's always, you know, those extra few things that you want to, uh, you know, change about yourselves. Change that, but not at the risk of making it an obsession to change it. Like, you know, Very nice. You need to have peace of mind, and then it's fine. Very nice, lovely message, and I'm sure a lot of people will get will get inspired after listening to you. And uh, as you know, Rajasvi, the show is about Madhvi's Luxury dot co. I would like to know the definition of luxury according to you. I think the definition of luxury is constantly changing. Earlier, people used to think of luxury as a destination. But now I think the travel to the destination also needs to be luxurious. Uh, for people, it's not just owning a bag, but you know, uh, owning something new, something exclusive constantly. And, and I think luxury might not be a necessity, but it is one of those pleasures in life people like to indulge in. Nation of luxury from the very uh, Rajasvi Zaweli, very well said. And uh, Rajasvi, what is the message you would like to give uh, to the audience on COVID-19 today? I think uh, it's just everyone should be safe, but I don't think people should be terrified of li living their lives. Um, like any other situation that we've handled, over the last many years, we've had influenza, we've had Ebola, we've had all sorts of outbreaks. But I think it's all about living life with positivity and, you know, keeping safe. And social distancing is a must nowadays. Uh, but don't be afraid to live, I think. Because you never know in such situations, you know, how long you have to actually enjoy the simple pleasures of life. hosting you on the show and I'm sure it's been really informative for the audience a very different topic uh, which is like India debates skin bias as duty companies alter advertisements it's been amazing having you here on the show thank you so much That's thank you for having me Madhi it was great being on the show nice talking to you as always and uh, it's good to talk about this topic also you know so at least people uh, might not listen to it completely, but will think about it surely in their free time, hopefully. I'm sure. Thank you. Have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Pleasure. So guys, uh, as every day we've been coming up with a very different topic and a different personality as you just, uh, you know, watch.
watch the program and in case if you miss the program you can watch it on my youtube and uh, also like you know the show is supported and powered by some real estate people jewelers and as well as by artists who have been on board with me so i'm really honored to have them on board and get them here for all of you all here thank you so much for having me here and uh, listening to the show and being here every day see you guys tomorrow